we'll get underway and we'll see uh, see how the day goes with with technology because if technology is going to screw up, it should happen during the technology presentation, don't you think? That's when it should happen. Welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. Um, my name is Peter O'Connell, and we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, how podcasts are made. Some of you come to us with a variety of different types of presentations and, and, and experiences in podcasting, having to do with equipment, having to do with knowledge base. Uh, I was asked to put something together to sort of uh, brush, uh, broad stroke the, uh, the entire topic uh, for people of various levels and knowledge bases. Who am I and what do I do and how come, I, how come you should listen to me? Um, my company is Audio O'Connell Voice Over Talent. We do television commercials, radio commercials, documentaries, station imaging, the, you know, Q107, uh, all that exciting stuff. We do it better than that, though. Uh, character voices and message on hold. Um, what else do we do? Turns out we also do podcasting. It's a natural extension of what we've done in audio production for over 20 years. I want to impress you with all that I know about, so I'm going to let you guys read all about me and how smart I am, how brilliant I am, how talented I am and enjoy everything about, all right, we're just read this. Um, 20 years of experience in the business uh, and worked uh, with clients across the country. What we're gonna cover today, uh, the equipment you need for podcasting, we're gonna talk about some different, uh, different levels of, of, uh, of equipment. There's some beginner stuff, there's some advanced stuff. It's up to you and your commitment about what you want to do uh, regarding uh, the equipment you need. We're gonna talk about the rundown. Um, a lot of people go into podcasting or are in podcasting now and are kind of a shotgun approach. They're all over the place when they're doing their production. Uh, and, and the point is, it, in some cases, it's unlistenable. Has anyone here ever come across an unlistenable podcast? Raise your hand. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well then maybe this is a good topic. Um, and we all have, and then sound options to consider. How we can cover certain things uh, to improve the sound of your podcast. Uh, to make it more uh, professional. Again, uh, we'll talk about how uh, professionalism doesn't equal conservative uh, because a lot of people want something that's really way out there in the sound, and we're going to cover that. Podcasting equipment is where we're going to start. Uh, we're going to talk about computer, we, computers, good sound card, audio software, microphone mixer. I don't want to talk about computers. That's way too huge a topic to get into today. But what I do want to talk to you about as far as producing a good podcast is a good sound card some decent audio software and some microphone mixers. And I want to get some input from you guys on things that have worked for you, okay? Because some people are going to have some success stories. Some people are going to have, have some horror stories, which we can all learn from. Um, but let's, let's talk about some of the things that have worked for you from an equipment standpoint. And let's, you know, we'll keep in mind that there's budgets that everybody's working with, and we'll, and we'll respect that. And there are people who are, you know, single-handedly rich, and we want to get to know those people very, very well. Um, let's talk, talk about a good sound card first. Obviously, it's something you don't want to ignore. Most computers have one, okay? They have an okay sound card. They have something that, um, uh, that from, a, from a sound standpoint, you can hear everything pretty okay. Sometimes you don't, uh, and that's why you need to think about uh, looking at things like external sound cards. Anybody here have a bum sound card ever with their computer, ever have any technical problems with it? You've had it? Okay, see? And, this is the challenge that you run into when you're producing a podcast, because what good is trying to get your message out if nobody can hear you? Um, and one of the things I was asked to do was to, to uh, share some of my professional resources of things that I've used and, and I've done and, and resources uh, that I know of that could help you guys looking for, uh, looking for technical in information on your, uh, on your podcasting productions. They price from $35 to $200, and obviously everybody has technology that makes it USB or firewall uh, comfort level for everybody here? Yes, yes, okay, good. Um, some brands to consider, M-Audio, Creative Technology, uh, Elsys, Tascam, and DigiDesign. Um, these are familiar names to everybody, sort of, yes, kind of, um, and if they're not, don't be, imp don't be impressed by the names nor don't be scared of them. Um, there is no, um, there are people who are production and technology snobs. It goes with computers, it goes with audio. And when you get it, Stephanie from Voices.com is laughing at me because she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there are people, you know, I only work with Sony, or, you know, I, on, you know, I only have a Neumann microphone. I won't work with anything else in the world. Absolutely. Fall, fall, fall. And, you know, what's the, what's the, what's the deal? Um, it's the same thing on, on technology, and it's the same thing on budget. If you're smart about it, and you're looking at your budget, and you're saying, okay, I want to start with a starter kit, a, a sort of a starter kit on podcasting and make a basic commitment to it and see where it goes. That's probably the right thing to do for you because you need to get comfortable with the basic 
uh, technology of podcasting and the equipment that's involved. You can look at places like DealTime, and eBay can be your friend. Here's the thing I found with eBay. I bought a couple things, some very high priced things on eBay. And if you, if you get to know the people that you're dealing with on eBay and, and take the time to try and do that if you're in an auction, it can be a really nice thing. I bought a very nice uh, $1,200 professional microphone. And obviously what I do for a living, there's, there's uh, you know, I do a lot more than just podcasts. And then my things are, my, my, uh, my productions are playing on, on broadcast stations and networks and, and all around the world in various, in various uh, formats. My, my audio production for the things I do on a more regular basis have to be top notch. So I'm going to spend a little bit more on microphones, etc. You may not, but my point is that I went and got that great microphone for about mm, three, four hundred dollars less than I would have paid retail. It was slightly used, but it was perfectly good audio. We had arranged, uh, set up an arrangement, and it worked out great. My point is that there are sources out there aside from retail, okay, at, that you that you can look at and get involved with, and maybe they might be worthwhile as you start setting up some of your uh, some of your sound productions. More podcasting equipment, audio software. It is the heart of your production and it's the key to shaping the sounds that you want. Now there's a variety of different types of audio software out there, but you've got to decide again on your level of commitment. How many people here have not yet produced a podcast at all? Okay, so we have mm, maybe about 20% of the room. How many people have produced between one and 10 podcasts? Okay, that's a little less than that, so that takes about 25% of the room. Everybody else has produced more than 10 podcasts? Okay, yes. Yeah. Oh, got another one due tonight. Um, I'm going to do one from here. Here, talk, quick, just say something. It'll be my podcast. Um, the point is, depending on your level of commitment, as you see from the talk, talking about sound cards, there's a lot of choices that you have to work with. Um, you need to you know to sort of figure out again budget how much you're gonna, time you're going to commit to podcasting um, and and then by that way you'll you will have determined and develop sort of the uh, the technology budget for yourself. Not talking dollars here, you know uh, dollars are a different type of budget, but technology budget. What are you willing to uh, bring in for yourself? How are you willing to uh, access technology? Anybody here use Audacity? I think I talked to Russ. He used Audacity. Why do we use Audacity? Free. Thank you very much. We love free. That's a huge word. We love it. Um, it is a very good basic software for a lot of what you want to do. Okay. Um, it it doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles as far as I'm concerned. But for, and and again, talk about snobbery. Well, audacity wouldn't touch it. Um, it's actually it's actually a perfectly good software. Again, for the beginner, for the start, for the startup, for what you're for what you're doing. Um, I found another one, just searching the web, the Eat Podcast Creator uh, from Download.com. Does anyone here know about Download.com? Who does not know about Download.com? Raise your hand. Does not know about it. Okay, good. Okay, free stuff. <laughs> Ken, we love the free. Uh, free is our friend. Um, and it, it looked like a very good software to me. I had not used it yet, but I, I, I liked the way it looked and the way it put it together, so I was going to recommend it as a, as a free thing. Okay, advanced. We've all heard of Adobe. Um, and Adobe... Uh, had nothing to do in the sound industry. They were all pictures and graphics and blah, we're going to make things look sharp. Then they decided they want to make things sound sharp, but they didn't have the technology. So they, you know, they did what every good corporation does, and they bought somebody who, who does have the technology. That's the, that's the great North American way. Um, and so they bought a company called Cool Edit Pro, which put together a really nice uh, mid to high level software. Anybody here using Adobe Audition? Cool Edit Pro nice. still. Cool Edit Pro still? Fine. You know, the great change. thing about these audio softwares, <laughs> the, the softwares are that they add plugins and they add techniques and effects, and certainly for studio recording and, micro, and, and music recording, there's a lot more to add to it. But if you get a, you know, you get a, a, a basic edition of 1.3 or 1.0 of, of, of Cool Edit Pro, it's really good. It's, you don't need any more. You don't need to spend the money to go up and, 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 and get more uh, software for the, uh, for the money. But Adobe Audition, which is now in 2.0, uh, the new screen and the new look of Adobe Audition looks a lot like this guy, Pro Tools, which is a great friend of Apple. I'm <laughs> guessing that somebody here has an Apple. Yeah, Pro Tools. I use Pro Tools. Um, and that's okay. Uh, you know, we don't look down on the Apple people because this is Apple City here, I found. They looked at me when I walked in here with this PC, and the, and the guy looked at me like, oh, you poor man. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Should we have a telethon for you? He doesn't have an Apple. Um, and I said... Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, but at least we have two buttons on our mice. Yeah, exactly. That's right. We do. Um, there's no button on this mouse. I don't understand. 
Um, free demos on both of these products. If you haven't seen them, download.com or visit Adobe or DigiDesign. Um, DigiDesign does some nice stuff, and Pro Tools is a great software. For, for me, in my opinion, for podcasting, it is, it is way overshooting the runway. It is, it is way too much. And in a, in a lot of ways, Adobe can be too, but it's, Adobe is a lot simpler, especially the 1.5 version, is a lot easier to operate. Now, here is, uh, here is a topic near and dear to my heart. Is anyone here a golfer? Raise your hand if you're a golfer. Okay, what do we know about golfing? One thing we know about golf, no, not that it's boring, um, it's, it's not that people who have it have a pole in their butt, no, it's not about golf. What we know about golfers is they love to talk about their clubs, and they love to collect putters, and they love to collect drivers, and they love, it's just, audio people are saying about microphones. We can, you can call it phallic, I don't care what you call it, but we love our microphones, and we have a thousand different versions of them, we, you know, the, the cardioid and condenser and all that, we, you know, we love our microphones, and when it comes to podcasting, this is where you, you've heard the sort of subscribe to the nice podcast. I have no idea what they just said, but that's their podcast, and they're proud of it. Bad microphone. It's not even sound card yet. They haven't even gotten to, they haven't gotten the sound to the computer yet to get to the sound card. They've got a bad microphone. Um, so what I would encourage you folks uh, to look at and to improve your sound right off the top is look at a decent microphone. Now, a lot of there's two different uh, uh, mindsets on this. There's the headset and there's the handheld on the stand, and we saw, you know, everybody pretty much understands that. Um, I, in doing my research, I found that there's actually some really high-branded um, audio microphone producers who are have some really good headsets that you can buy right now. It's not just Radio Shack, okay? Um, audio Technica, very reasonable brand. Sure Microphones, excellent brand. Uh, AKG, another good, uh, another good brand. Handheld on a stand, there's, there's a ton of options out there. You can do those options from anywhere uh, from, uh, you know, probably uh, 75 to $100. You can get a nice Shure SM57 microphone. See, you start calling out brand names. It's like, you know, I have my King Cobra driver. I have my SM57 microphone. But this is a really nice option. Uh, is, any, is anyone here using the podcaster microphone right now? I thought maybe I'd run into somebody who would. Are you using it from Rode? I'm using, uh, you know what, I got the podcast factory kit. Oh, you did, okay. And it has the audio internal sound card and the microphone and the rim and the rim. That's all right, that's okay. Um, this is a very interesting thing. I encourage you to, t to take a look at it. I saw the online demo for it, and, I, and with the online demo, they had the sound in it, and I don't believe it was processed uh, because they basically said it wasn't. Um, it's an interesting microphone for uh, a couple of reasons. One, it has good audio quality, okay? Uh, secondly, and maybe most importantly, and the thing that I found most interesting was, it is a USB microphone. This is an entirely new industry for microphones. Using, using USB microphones is, is opening up the whole world. You're taking it basically and making it as simple as possible to give yourself good audio sound. Again, if you have a good sound card, you're in good shape on your computer because you can plug directly into the computer, making it as fast as possible to do your podcast from wherever you want. You don't have to tote around a mixer, even if it's a small little M Audio 2 channel mixer, you know, or you know, you have a lessee or you go Tascam or whatever, get the bigger mixers. This makes it all the more portable, but the key is to make sure it has good sound. The Rode does have good sound. The Rode makes a tremendous um, uh, professional microphone, and, and I'm not talking about the podcast here. This is their history. They, are, they, they do very nice microphones for a reasonable amount of money. I'm not endorsed by any of these products, by the way, and I do not own a Rode. Um, I, own, I own a Neumann. But to be able to put together a $200 podcaster microphone that plugs right into your USB port that can be picked up by your, by your, uh, your audio software is a real nice opportunity. What makes it even nicer is they have a headphone jack right in the microphone that you can that you plug into the microphone, so you don't even you can hear the sound coming right into your headphones. Again, for portability, for speed, for for any reason you want, for convenience, and Lord knows we need convenience in our lives. The the Rode seemed to be a pretty nice uh, pretty nice opportunity. So if anybody is here from Rode, I expect my new Rode podcaster. Be in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> so let's say, like many of you, you have more than one presenter or one speaker in your in your uh, podcast. If you're if you're doing it in studio and you're not tying in with Skype or you're not tying in a uh, a phone interview through a mixer, which I, I wasn't even going to go there, um, but, but uh, Russell actually gave me some very inf nice information about a, a Skype uh, uh, a phone recording system today. That was nice. Um, you want to get a mixer, okay? What kind of mixer do you want? There's tons of them. 
Uh, you need to decide, I mean, you really can go as low as 50 to $75 for an, for an M-Audio uh, two-channel mixer where you plug in two, two microphones and work it that way. It's terribly basic and it works just as, just as well. Um, how many people are doing multiple person podcasts on a regular basis? One, two, regular basis. Okay, so it's a regular, similar. Similar, okay, but I mean, it's it, it, at this point, it's a situation where you have multiple people in here. Now, uh, Peter, you're doing a, a multiple one. What mixer are you using right now? Alessi. Alessi. Okay, is it eight channel or twelve channel? Eight channel, and using I got a CAD mic, and I think I got something else. Okay. So CAD mic. How much is the CAD mic running? 180 bucks. 180 bucks, okay. So on, on average, people often ask me when they're talking about technology, whether it's talking about for the studio or whatever. I mean, for your purposes, you can really spend, if you're spending more than $250 on a microphone, you're probably paying too much. If you're paying more than $250 for a mixer, you're probably paying too much. And you can probably dial back between $50 and $100 in each of those products to make sure you're getting a reasonable uh, quality piece that's going to give you the sound quality you want, give you the bells and whistles that you want, that's going to, that's going to uh, give you the, uh, the output quality that you want to be able to produce reasonable uh, audio, uh, audio production for your, uh, for your piece. Yamaha also has a nice, and these are, uh, again, I, I put these uh, two on here, Alessi and Yamaha, because they make also USB mixers. Again, making it as convenient as possible, cutting down the wires. I'm just waiting for all this to go wireless. It'll be a couple of years, but I'm sure it'll happen. Now, let's talk about kits. Anyone here just bought, I know you bought the kit. Get the kits, I want to raise my hand. <laughs> Who else has bought a, just a podcaster kit? One, two. How much your podcaster kit call you, Kevin? Cost you, Kevin? 150 bucks. 150, where'd you get it? Uh, it's the M Audio Podcast Company. Okay, so um, everyone has seen these kits. They are basically uh, some level of mixer, some level of microphone. Sometimes, did yours have software, audio software with it? Yeah, uh, well, uh, Audacity. It's audacity. Yeah. Um, it's free. What a value. Um, and that's right. Nothing wrong with free. Um, but in other words, so these, these kits are available out there. And the ones that I saw that were pretty reasonable and looked like pretty good quality to me, I didn't see yours, was uh, BSW. Uh, they have a variety. This is a great uh, resource. Uh, it is used by the broadcast pros a lot uh, for, for a variety of more technical um, types of audio uh, mixing and audio production for, for what, people, uh, what people need. So BSW is a really uh, good, uh, good group for you to look at. Let's talk about podcasting rundown. This is all about organization. Organization equals credibility for your podcast. And many of you, I'm sure, run terrific podcasts that I haven't heard yet. But, I mean, you know you're the expert. And, it's, uh, and people were talking to me earlier about, uh, you know, well, you're a voiceover talent. I'm sure you have a great podcast. I still don't produce a podcast. I don't have time to produce podcasts. I'm producing other people's podcasts. Um, but, you know, they say, well, you must sound great because you're a voiceover. It, sounding great and sounding like an expert doesn't mean you have a broadcasting voice. It just, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about that in a second, but you don't have to be a broadcaster. You don't have to be a public speaker to be a really good uh, presenter on a podcast. You just need to have a certain level of credibility as far as I'm concerned. The listener needs to understand what they're going to learn or experience from listening to your podcast. Now, as we, as we indicated at the beginning of uh, this program, there's a lot of people who have heard some really crappy podcasts. And I'm sure when you listen to the podcast, you saw the title, and went, well, that's something I'd like to learn about. And it seemed to go off into a thousand different tangents. You know, when you're, when you're producing a podcast, when you're producing an produ uh, audio production, radio commercial, uh, any sort of show of any sort, you need to respect the person's time and, and, and give them a pretty good sense of what they're going to get. Some people appreciate eclectic, and eclectic works for many people. And it's not, but for the majority of what people are trying to achieve in podcasts, eclectic won't work so well. What you want to try and do is make sure they understand what, they're, what you're trying to say. Again, you, you need to articulate clearly your presentation. You can be buttoned up, and it can be a formal presentation, like it might be not to a banker or an insurance agent may do a podcast. You can be free form and just sort of have a fun conversation about a variety of things. Whatever the topic is, whether it's gardening or whether it has something to do with uh, home improvement or, you know, advertising or marketing. Rambling is bad. Not always. No. R rambling, <laughs> sorry, rambling is bad, and it's my presentation, so I get to say rambling is bad. <laughs> um, and, and here's why, I, I, and, and, and I'll, I'll put it in context. Like I said, free form is perfectly fine, um, but you're respecting people's time when you're when when you're talking to them, and and you need to if you're trying to accomplish something, if you have a purpose to your production, um, to take them down the road and take them sort of a logical sequence of events 
You need to sort of think about that. And here's what, and this is why we want to talk about the rundown. A rundown of topics. How many people right now, when they do their podcast, before they do their podcast, sort of set up an agenda for what they're going to talk about? Okay, look around the room, keep those hands up, please. Okay? This is important. Now everyone's going, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm throw my hand up. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, and it's okay if you don't, because again, this is a burgeoning, burgeoning industry. It's, it's developing. It, if you are trying to accomplish something with your podcast, if you, if you just want to do something that goes all over the place and there's no real, you don't have any objective, you just want to get some thoughts across, that, that really is fine. I'm, I, what I'm talking about is people who have objectives. Um, Stephanie does one on voiceovers, uh, and so she has some, you know, she has things that she wants to accomplish, topics she wants to talk about. She, um, she may interview guests. We talk at, at least um, 30 or 40 percent of the people here inter, uh, have interviews and guests. So we need to know what are the what are we going to talk to the guests about? Does the guests know what you're going to talk to them about? That's part of the rundown process of producing a podcast, getting them organized, making sure they understand what uh, the listener understands, the guests understand, they know what's going what's to take place. It doesn't have to be a script. I'm not asking you to take a sheet of paper and go, uh, thank you for coming to my podcast and listening. Today we are going to talk about that. That's not interesting either. That's almost worse than rambling. Um, don't do that. Uh, make it conversational. But, but keep a rundown of what you want to achieve and let the guests know about what's, what's going on with it. Establish a running time in your, sh in your head for the show. Okay? Think about your topic. Think about what you think is a reasonable running time for your show. Will, you, will people stay with your show for an hour? If they will, then fine. Um, are they going to stay with it for 30 minutes? Maybe they will. Are they only going to stay with it for 10 minutes? Whatever that time is, think about that as you're putting together your rundown. You have to accomplish a certain amount of things, and you have to accomplish them in a, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time in order to make sure that they are listenable for your audience. So think about that time rather than just going on and on, because otherwise you're going to have to do a lot of editing. But editing is not a bad thing. When you, when you, play, back that, when you play back that production, be, you know, be reasonable about some of the things. And, and if you want it to be natural, if you want it to be more newsy and, and the live interview feel about it, then okay. I understand not editing and just rolling the tape and whatever's on there is on there. That's absolutely cool. All I'm saying is if you have certain things that you want to achieve, that you need to achieve in your podcast, and there are extraneous things that you've recorded in the initial thing, uh, in the initial production, pull it out. Because if you don't think it's listenable, guess what? Your listenership probably won't either. So pull it out. You know, don't make it, don't make it bad for, for folks. Think about it from a listener's perspective. Just everything you do, how is my audience going to react to this? How will my audience respect this or not respect this or like this or not like this? Think about it from their perspective. How am I helping them with what they're going to understand uh, about, about what, I want them to, uh, what I want them to know? Let's talk about sound options. I'm going to go fast on this because I'm running short on time. The production and the on-air sound. Knowing or defining your podcast objective, purpose, audience will help you know how you want to, uh, to design sound elements. Sorry, that went ahead. Um, how you want to define sound elements for your uh, for your production? What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to show. I'm going to play that for you now. If my computer keeps up, and maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah, I know it's because I don't have a Mac. It's that damn PC. Right? Yeah. That damn PC. Let me see if it plays. I don't know if it's going to play through or not. I'm not there. You have to put it. Well, it doesn't matter. It sounds really great. I did it. Um, so <laughs> that's all you need to know, really. Um, it, it worked in rehearsal, I swear to God. Um, and if you want to hear it, I've got, uh, you can just email me and I'll, I'll send you some information on it. Uh, but it just shows you some of the sound design that, we, that we've been able to put together um, to make sure that these things... Try it now? Yeah, it's going to work now. Oh, please. You people. Catch up there. There we go. There you go. Look, I'm in audio and not in video. And, and where's the audio for... I'm hearing it. Can we turn it on? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to check it out. These are some of the elements that we've done for podcasts so people can introduce their shows to make themselves look better. The time Listen to, to the express in the different types of productions and different types of podcasts. Shout something and be a winner. Do it freely. Powerfully. Yeah. Uh, Warren, all we're of about to hear two guys talk about things of absolutely no importance to anyone but themselves. This is Podcast Pendulum. 
bringing you today's behind the scenes look at independent filmmaking. This is In the Can with your hosts, David and Johnny. You've got problems. Your seminar attendance is nowhere near capacity. Participants are not returning or providing referrals. Your seminar content and presentations are feeling a little flat. Well, we've got solutions. This is Last Minute Training, a podcast filled with strategies for helping trainers create remarkable seminars. Now, here's the host of Last Minute Training, Louis Trahan. What you heard in there was a variety of different formats, styles. It's as if you were listening to the radio and punching the buttons. Everybody is different. But when you start a, pro a production like that, and when you come up with something more like, Hi, this is Joe Schmo, and welcome to my podcast. I would like, I would like to tell you why you should invest your hard-earned money with me, Joe Schmo. And you're going like, uh, no, I don't think so, Joe. Not so much. And and the the point is, you want to try and establish in some way, shape, or form a level of professionalism. But you heard some, you know, guy burping in an introduction for God's sake. You know how professional is that? So it's a little out there. But you know, whatever they wanted to achieve. We created a sound, a sound design, and that's sort of what I'm talking about when I talk about sound design, and that's what I help uh, most of my clients with. Again, professional doesn't mean conservative. Belching is not conservative. Um, your on-air sound. Everybody hates how they... Anyone here like how they sound on the radio? Okay. A couple of ego situations here? Okay, folks. That's fine. <laughs> I sound marvelous! Um, okay. Good for you. Um, you like to put your podcasts up there so we can all listen and see just how marvelous you sound? No, um, and you probably do. Um, and, and the thing about talking on the air is you want to talk. Um, on, you want to talk as yourself. You want to be natural, but you just want to be a little bit bolder. You know, and it's about mic technique and things like that. You can always hear yourself and how you talk. But if you if you talk, you know, just in conversation, and I'm talking, you know, I'm talking to Stephanie, and saying, "Hi, how you doing? What's going on?" It's, you know, but you know, when you get to a microphone, you go. Hi, how you doing? Thank you very much for coming over here. You know, it, it, it sounds different. You have to practice your mic technique. You have to present, practice your on-air sound a little bit. And so just remember this phrase, sound like you, only a bit bolder. Bolder is not louder. Louder is better. Jeez, I thought it was Hi, how tech. Are how are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> all right, you're going to be on television right now. Ignore me entirely, if at all possible. Oh, not a, not a problem. I won't play to the camera. It's not my style. Thank you very much. Extreme close-up. Um, but when you're looking at your on-air sound, you definitely want to be a bit bolder in what you're talking about. Picture or imagine who you are talking to. That may help you because oftentimes you're in your house or you're in a studio and you're not paying really, you know, you're not paying any attention to the sort of sound you're emitting to your audience. But what you are doing is just sort of, you know, talking. But you're not talking to someone. If you're talking to a friend, if it helps when you're doing the podcast, take a picture of somebody you like and, and put it up on the wall. And as you're presenting your podcast, you know, put that, put that picture in front of them and talk to that person as you would. Establish a comfort level because that sound that you emit will be, will be comfortable out to everybody who is, who is listening. They will get that sound that you're trying to emit. They will understand how you're, trying to, uh, how you're trying to come across. And it will make your podcast sound better. Um, posturing, diction, language. Um, all I'm saying is, you know, if you're sitting over like this in front of a microphone, your head is very straight, you're not, you're not sounding necessarily the way you want. There is something to be said for sitting up straight. Like your mother said, turns out your mother was right. Um, and you do want to sit up straight sometimes. It does, it does help when you're doing these presentations. Um, I'm sure there are probably just a few questions. Thank you very much for having me. And I, here's some information if you need to get in touch with me. Anybody have any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Just curious, did you not mention cap plaster for a reason, or? Um, there's which which other ones did I omit? You know, there's tons of them. Again, cast plaster is not uh, a bad one. It's it's absolutely a reasonable one. It's just there's so many, and I only had half an hour. Um, yes. Microphones for video podcasting. Yes. Um, I've seen so many out there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to narrow it down just to sort of one or two. It depends on the type of video production you're doing. In other words, is it something where you want a handheld microphone and it works with the visual shot you want? Is it something where you want a lavalier? I think we want something that's a tie clip. Yeah, tie clip, lavalier. You, can, you can't go wrong with most lavaliers. If you go with any of those brands that I, that I talked to you about, Shure, um, AKG, um, Sony. Sony makes some great lavaliers. 
All of those folks make very good lavaliers. Some of them are wireless, um, tons of options. Very uh, um, Go with a brand name, with a lavalier. Yes? I hear what you're saying. I see all those points, and I'm not doing any of them. OK. And I know. And my question is, is, as a podcaster, sometimes I feel like I don't want it to sound like radio or okay. overproduced. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, if obviously, you're in uh, business. So yeah. is there? There is a happy medium. Um, and, and that's. And to try and articulate that within a half hour is quite a, quite a tall task. Thank you, Lisa Barnes. Um, and again, me, me trying to say, you know, the best phrase I could come up with was uh, per, professional doesn't mean conservative. Um, and you can come up with a lot of creative ways to make yourself sound professional. I'm trying to make, um, in this presentation, people sound listenable. You, I know, sound listenable because I've seen your presentation. There, um, and it is not, and when you when you're listenable, you don't you know you don't have a booming you know trip you know da, 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 Don LaFontaine movie trailer voice. Neither do I. Okay, but I'm saying what I'm saying to those folks who, who aren't comfortable speaking in public or speaking in a microphone, but still have a message to get out. That there's a way there there are little tricks. And this college I'm sure has uh, semesters full of classes on how to sound better on a microphone or how to sound uh, look better in a t in a in a television camera. And it, and so to do it in a short amount of time is tough, but you really, you just need to make sure that you're sounding better than muttering or just better than conversational because that adds credibility. And you have a credibility in your speaking voice, and I'm not, you know, blowing smoke here. Some folks don't, and, that, and, and so the difference for professionalism for you is, is, is very small. For some other folks, it's going to be wider. That's, that's the challenge. Yes, Preston. When, when it comes to that, I would say, as a general rule, you want, I think, the best way to reach an audience is being conversational. Mm -hmm. It goes back to... If you're ever in a play, they say, speak from your diaphragm. Yeah. Speak from your chest. I find you will get the best feedback and the best response if you speak to someone, you, you talk in your podcast like a conversation. Right. So when they're tuning in, they're listening to your show, it's like they're just jumped into, they just come over to your house or come over to your place. That is, the natural, that is the natural progression, and he's not wrong. Again, that's sort of where you take the picture of the friend and you put it up on the wall and you talk to that person. You know, and and trying and when you're trying to establish credibility again, you need to um, just talk a little bit bolder, and and bolder is different for different people. And we'd have to do an entire uh, voice acting <coughs> class for me to get you there. I have two more questions, and I think I'm gonna get bounced out of here. Yes. Okay, Sandy Biting from SassyScience.com. I'd love to get into more sound design, and I mean, in my day job, like I have a huge sound effects library available to me, yeah. but I'm not licensed to use that in my Sassy Science podcast. Yeah. So, are there any Free sound effects libraries that have like just you know the sound yeah, the tires screeching. I mean, I know you can go out and record all of these things here, but yeah, there's yeah, garage band. Garage band is one of them. Uh, has has some free stuff. Garage band. But GarageBand.com? Yeah, the, the, the garage. Well, you can go to garage. Oh, okay. Online, they, I on, online at Garage Band Online. I think it's garage. I'm guessing it's GarageBand.com. Who else needs the domain Garage Band? Also, Lucas has has a special or sound effects you like. To play. Does he really? Yeah. Like Isn't he nice? After the first billion, he decided to yeah. share with the masses. No, but That's if nice. You want to spend 500 bucks or a thousand bucks? You can get like a lot of sound effects. Yeah. And, and there are tons of sound effects libraries. There are tons of music libraries that you can get. Um, I'm forgetting the one I just bought that was uh, just on VOBB. That was like. There, there is one online, but I can't remember. It's $99 for like 35 licensed music discs. It's, I mean, it's a really, it's a really. Digital, digital juice. Digital juice, yeah, digital juice is a, is a thank you. Um, sorry, there, and there is one that's really cool. It's on my delicious bookmarks. I can check it for you later. Okay. Yeah. I just found it last week. It was sound effects, and it's free, and it's Creative Commons, and they were great. Yeah, and there's, um, there's, a, there's a couple others, and, and you have to email me so I can look at my bookmarks, because I can't remember. Okay. Bruce Murray, by the way, his answer to that question when he was asked last year about sound effects is, Google? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. But she was she actually used the word license. Yeah, well, it, which throws there, everything off. There, there, there are actually there are a lot of free services. There's also there's a Creative Commons uh, repository. Yeah, yeah there's and, and the and the trouble is getting the quality one. There's one that I that a friend of mine has and he gave me his password and I go in there for great sound effects, but you have to sift through them. And this is for commercial work a lot more. Yeah. Peter, yes. I, yeah, this, it's Calvin Sigberry from Wildfire. I produce TV and I see movies, but the one thing that the one thing that everyone <coughs> sort of forgets is that there's a difference between producing something for commercial purposes right. versus something that's just a personal uh, podcast. Yes. You have to be careful when you start putting sound effects behind something that 
uh, you know, it's great your your imagery or your audio is yours, but your copyright clearance on a lot of this stuff is kind of iffy and you don't want to get sued. Well, thank you for saying that because if you go to a professional agency such as my own, which has the license, you have no problem because I'm, you know, you're buying it. Um, but but your but your the point is very well taken. I mean, the use of commercial, uh, you know, hit radio songs. If you grab something by John Mayer and use it in your podcast, you know, mm, there there are problems with that, and you have to be very careful about that. And again, it's it's a huge topic, and I'm already over here. If anybody has any, I'm sorry, just see me afterwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this person go. Uh, you can find me on Rise or LinkedIn if you if you want to uh, hook up with me. Uh, I have a blog as well on AudioOConnell.com. And if you have any questions, you can email me as well. And I appreciate very much uh, taking part of your day. And thanks for inviting me up here.